Hello everyone. Today is a very unique episode, and so I want to communicate <clears throat> uh, and talk about for a little bit about geometric vehicles of consciousness. Um, <clears throat> and in a sense, actually, let me let me say it in a better way: when geometry meets light, that's what I want to talk about. And so it's a very um, unique concept, but it's one where I want to share a bit of my own personal experience and in a sense walk you through my eyes to see how in a sense I am experiencing my sense of cellular realm. And what that means is that guys, geometry and light has had a very uh, uh, very unique significance in my life. So for example, there's the light that we see, there's the poetic like light that mystics have talked about, and also <clears throat> there is the light which is what you're considering is what you are seeing. In other words, that which is giving you, in a sense, all sense of visibility. So, <clears throat> in a sense, it can be the light of awareness as well. Now, for example, one way of acknowledging light is like the lamp on your desk. So, I want to simply tell you, do not think of light in the way you normally do. And in a sense, I want to say that to experience the multidimensionality in your subtler planes of thought, um, there are methods of doing that, but it requires an emotional observance first, then an allowance of the emotion to just, in a sense, uh, give you its melody through your instrumentation. So <clears throat> what that really means is that suddenly think of a moment where you were around nature and you just had a very peaceful breath. You just breathe, regardless of what air you breathe, but you just breathe. And you, in a sense, were just found in a moment of your own silence, so a silence of being. Now, I want to say, <clears throat> imagine from that moment, you then, through that feeling of just like very comfortable knowing and just, you're just observing and you're just loving how big this universe is and how small you've been, uh, in a sense, considered to be. So, From that platform of a memory, of a comfortable memory in your experience, begin seeing how the imagery you're considering, so the thoughts that you have, if you pay attention to them, you can add scenery or you can observe scenery. So what that means is that when I say, for example, the word flower, so the first time you're here, you just hear it as a word. So the, you know, you're hearing the sound flower, the word flower, and you're hearing me say it. So you're just acknowledging first the word. But if I say, for example, a white flower, right? And you just begin seeing, okay, a white flower. And so your mind has the visualizations. It could be a white rose or it could be some, something else, you know? And uh, you're just kind of, in a sense, <clears throat> observing it. Now, let's say if I said lotus and you suddenly see the imagery, it's a white flower, but a certain white flower. You see how the imagery is being changed? So terminology has different imagery where if you're very gently and compassionately and mindfully with the Zen master smile observing, you will see that this imagery gives you an ability to observe yourself from new moments of, uh, in a sense, self-awareness and subtler creation. I don't know how to say it, but let's, let's continue. So now that you've gone through this emotion and from this emotion, you've suddenly got the imagery, for example, oh, a lotus. And so how do you feel about that imagery? And so you, you recognize then after first paying attention to emotion, then going into imagery, then you want to come back to that emotion, right? So what that means is that now that I've said a white flower, in which from your experience you have white flower, now how do you feel about it looking at the concept of white flower again? And you see it's like your whole understanding now has the addition of the understanding that you're having now. You see these are ways of feeling these subtler senses where man's mind is conceiving reality. And so, in this subtle plane of thought, you will see that if you close your eyes and you have an intention, so what that means is that you just, it's just something within you just takes you there because you're already there. And so <clears throat> when you go through that state, you see your exploration of reality is simply the, how much you're able to transition the change in your environment. So, 
In regards to geometry and light, for example, in, 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 in a different state of consciousness, for example, through a dream state of mine, but a very unique form of dream state where I was aware of my room as well while I was dreaming, and I, I, I realized that there was a shape present. And so I wondered geometry could present itself outside of my consideration. So it's as if like there's this totally different world of thought, of the projection of thought when man looks at it with his light, that he, in a sense, it's his own world, but it's such a vast world that he carries on through it if he chooses. And so he may end up where we have perhaps ended up. Very, very joyfully, of course. Now, If I was to tell you, visualize some shape that you prefer, some shape that you like in front of yourself, let's say you visualize it now, in front of your room. Let's say if you're in a room, if you're in a place, you're observing it literally visually as if like in your mind you have the whole consideration of room. Now you're visualizing that shape of preference that you like. Now let's say from that shape, observe how in its instant you can turn it into light. So consider this whole shape as a light. And so you see, this is simply visualization, but continue on with me. So <clears throat> you see that this shape has turned into light. Now let's say you begin walking, and as you're walking, let's say wherever you are, this shape, uh, not just in your mind, let's say. Let's say if, if I'm actually walking in the park and I'm, I'm visualizing this shape, but now I'm walking and this shape is walking in front of me, let's say. I have noticed that through certain subtleties in my own experience, when I become aware of my greater emotive, let's say, states of being, suddenly the thought cannot stay the same. So the thought, through my own allowance, through my observance, uh, gets its own natural rhythm. So it's as if the nature of being is in, present within all the dimensions of existence, the flow of it, right? So. I begin to see that if I was to walk in that park, geometry would move by itself and it's that without my consideration, shapes would form. So I kind of recognize that man has this subtler sense of conception in regards to thought in which once he allows through an intuitive knowing. So when spirituality and the rationality through science come together into man's experience, man's experience being the link that is connected again, you will see that, that those engagements will always lead to a greater co-creation because the intelligence of integration is never avoiding anything, is never missing anything else. So once you see your nature is present in that way, you become the aspect of reality that always was beyond its shape. You knew you, you, you are the keeper of shapes, but you are not the shape. You are the greater observance. You are the eyes that never needed to be in two, in a sense. You become, you become that sense of existential being, where you're like, I exist, and so all exists with me as well. And in that moment of silence, in that moment of stillness, the emotion and your sense of sincerity suddenly opens the door. So the sincere man, the compassionate the man, the man who trusted life and was himself to a point that he even allowed himself to see its change, recognized it was then that, in a sense, butterfly sat on his shoulder. Butterflies never seen before. You, you, will see, you will see the beauty in when you stop chasing things and observing what's present when you stop as everything else continues. It's, it's vast. It's very vast. It's in a sense sitting when you're recognizing the whole of existence is moving. So when you're sitting, you're simply more observant of your dimension and you spiral into greater, greater senses of uh, observance, awareness, and in a sense, co-creation. So let's say right now, if, that, if I was walking in that park, there was a huge sense of playfulness. My state of being uh, creates my environment. So it's your self-awareness that suggests the amount of ability you can even be aware of to even expressing. So self-awareness in its playful movement in, of consciousness from its solid sense of being to a more liquefied or in a sense more uh, observant sense of being, he gets allowances where the subtleties of your mind begin to dance. So, for example, I have walked and I have suddenly found shapes. For example, the inverted triangle 
was very significant. But even though it's just a shape, I saw that it, it, it is a vehicle in the sense that that was the vehicle I was given to study and understand. So <clears throat> I have personally within me felt that there would be certain messengers of certain shapes. So there are many shapes, but even and the one significant to man. And I feel, uh, for me at least, uh, I have a significance in my life to communicate about the vehicle of consciousness, the geometric vehicle of consciousness that the inverted triangle is. So, for me, imagine my, sh my shape of choice would be an inverted triangle, and I would suddenly see it is a sense of mirror, but a mirror that also has an entrance to another side. So what that means is that it's not playful co-creation in your mind, it's just that you are so empty in experience that you're observing that emptiness has greater plans. It's like you're suddenly realizing, whoa, the intelligence of life is a lot because now I can see how much it is. In other words, uh, the observer uh, could really see the totality of the game. But if you're a character in the game, you always feel, gosh, I, don't, I can't be like that space of existence. I, don't, I can't know that space. Yes, because the conception of reality is taken into that point. So, and so you will see that it is not in a sense that we are playing with clay. We are seeing that the playfulness in our subtler dimensions and how we open up to our greater understanding and multidimensionality is life's movement. It's, it's, it's nature's movement. And what that really means is that once you trust life, your observance can observe more infinite change. <laughs> and when I say more infinite change, more infinite change in each reality it conceives. <clears throat> so multidimensionality is introduced in a way where it's like you have trusted life so much that this is what it has shown. And so it's a movement, it's a, it's a sense of inspiration and love pulling you into the unknown to constantly reclarify and understand the knowing. So to observe your, a sense of unknown throughout your day is very important because that is how you learn, that's how you find curiosity in seeing that what you're aware of and what you feel you want to be aware of. So do not judge any aspect of your existence, but uh, create a sense of self-observance to the spectrums of duality that you have. Because these dualities in your playfulness and allowance of them will suddenly begin uh, <clears throat> allowing abstractions in your mind to intensify and show you new co-creations. So for example, geometry begins to sprout out of you. It just, it just bursts out of you. You begin to be the awareness of the whole shape and many views of viewing that shape. And also at the same time, that shape is also a subtler body. So what that means is that you get an association as a body with that shape and, that in your, and then in your subtler minds, this shape can go into anywhere of conception. So I do not travel immediately as a body. So I never, I'm never anywhere else other than here. I'm only here. My consciousness and self-awareness is also here. But it is in my other association that I get it. So in my collective states of self-awareness, so I'm not too solidified in, in the act that I want to do, I get this greater sense of uh, collect collectivity and this flow. So I understand the intelligence of the stream is more than the drop. So the drop has to have faith in its emergence with its environment, with its reality, with where it feels it needs to go. And as it goes, it, it joins the stream. Your experiences are adding to your understanding of life. And so self-awareness is expanding as infinitely as the universe is. Because that is how the conception has come to be. Because after the Big Bang, this is how we interpreted that sound. <laughs> That's how we interpreted the origin of man, and we must have the ability to constantly update our systems. So many people uh, see that today's world is not healthy, for example, and, and I don't want to say not healthy. I mean, there's definitely health is a personal choice and for you to maintain, but I want to say that there's a lot of distractions in culture and society. <clears throat> and if you choose to associate in society and culture without having a significance for where you want to go. So in other words, if your personal reality has no ambition, no significance, when you go around others, you will suddenly feel like you want to do what they do, but you can't, so why not? And you kind of disassociate with society in a sense. So many people who even get involved in society, if they're not aware of their presence in where they are, they can create mental disturbances which translate into stress, depression, and whatever you choose to consider. So it is a very natural thing to allow yourself to heal. <laughs>
In other words, if someone punches you, you know, and there's pain a bit, it, it, it goes away. So <laughs> do not keep things that are temporal. Do not keep anything. So at times you need an acknowledgement of your existence as even the pilot of consciousness beyond your memory. Because your memory can create confusion, which act as clouds, which you feel you don't know where you're going, but you're going somewhere. So that sense of knowing which you feel your life doesn't know, it's not a linear knowing. So what that means is that you will see that, oh gosh, what's the meaning of life? And you're thinking of it in this, and you, you, you're you totally avoiding the fact that this is your modality of thought. Like for example, last year you had a different way of thinking, but this is this year, and so now with this year, the greatest thing is not to try to use the values you have now to exactly see what's going on. I mean, you should do that on some subtler level, but I'm saying that you must see where the value of life is. And many people are thinking that it's external but it's actually internal. Because who is keeping you here? Who is here? Many people who even acknowledge the concept of God or the concept of a greater intelligence do not understand that. Is that real for you? Make it real if it's not. In other words, if you, if you, if you believe in sacrament, do not get clouded by other people's opinion. It's your reality. You choose for yourself. So what that means is a sacrament, for example, could mean your own way of chilling out, hanging out. It doesn't have to be anything, it's just a sensitivity to your life experience, for example. So you must not be hindered by other people's methodologies. Because at first I realized very immediately the methodologies they're teaching me, it's fine, but it's not getting me engaged. So I need to find out my own curriculum. So it's like sometimes you have to find out your own curriculum. And what's the best curriculum to learn from? It is life. It is your moment of being. And so there's a... <clears throat> Profound sense of allowance there, guys, as I keep coming back to, similar to our infinity sign, in a sense, presents itself in, the, in its center in a very profound way. So, <sighs> geometry will communicate to you, it is not a vehicle that you linearly need. It is simply an attention station. So it's like your attention goes there and in subtler realms you can co-create and then experience your subtle realms with the intensity that you're living here. So for example, when you have the realness of experience in one dimension, or in a sense, when you get self-awareness here in this dimension, let's say in this presence, you will see that uh, more aspects of you are known because you are, you're simply one part of the cloth. I, I, and in a sense, what that means is that you cannot, after some point of self-observance and existential self-observance, maintain bodies because you would see that measurement cannot continue with the flow of your, how your consciousness, in a sense, is, all, is growing into its next moment. You know, it's a, there's a profound existential movement and then there's a man's interpretation of that movement which he wonders uh, at times where that interpretation is coming from and it's obviously from man so your problems are coming from man and the man you think you are so how aware are you of the thoughts that you're associating with because great leaders uh, push out they're not bullied by ideas many people uh, do not understand uh, they are bullied by ideas so an idea comes and they're like gosh that idea is there. I can't go there, you know? And so their mentality is not one of instant confrontation. So what that means is that I, I usually have a very simple form of life, so I do not see confrontation or physicality, physical disturbances or fighting or vandalism or stuff like that. But within me, if there is any form of confrontation, whether it's on my subtle levels where a thought is projecting or coming into my space, in other words, some, some ideas coming into my temple and it's forgotten to take off its shoes, <laughs> I, I direct my knowing from my collective for an instant untouched clarity of my reality readjusting to the way I want. So what that means is that your intention to be in the way that you know you can suddenly manifests and bursts you to that advancement. So similarly in your subtler realms, if you know that you can experience it, then you will see the power of knowing is beyond form, so form blends into a one moment of observance that allows any relationship. Many people think that our world today is one where war and fighting, in a sense, with an imagine like sword fighting. 
but in a sense sword fighting or in a sense on certain levels of thought hasn't stopped and what that means is that you are required to confront the whole view because who would want to go see only Mona Lisa's chin you want to you want to go see the whole picture and see the elegance of how uh, Fibonacci was also par uh, part of the painter's vision do you know how so what I'm saying is that have a significance for your moment of existence and do not let that significance be relevant to oh I'm significant because I'm this guy doing this acknowledge everything in your reality as what there is say oh that's a bench that's a tree, that's a tree that's a, that this is the ground and these are simple acknowledgments but then you realize I am temporal just as much as that for example tree or that broken branch or as everything so once you see your nature is temporal and you're an observance that has continued in its evolutionary path, you realize this, you are that instant of transcendence always. You are not limited in any sense of being or individuality because you are the collective movement that is keeping you here. But this must become real for you because that is when you will get an existential responsibility in handling your realities. So in other words, many people don't even know they have temples and so there's a lot of dirt on, uh, in the temple, you know? So you need to clear your mind by recognizing that the need is not for more imagery for words, but the simplicity of observance for you to look at your life, not in the past, not in the future, but right now here. You can even see that once you, for example, I'm in that park and my visualization is simply just walking with me, for example, in my mind, I see that my memories give it color, give it vision. So when you see that your thoughts light up greater experiences, uh, you pay attention to them in a way that you're not touching them always, you're not defining the color, you're just seeing the color. So, for example, there's something where someone says, listen where you in a sense oh you think of a certain reality or you think of who's asking you to listen you simply listen and there's ways where you're just naturally hearing so you're just walking and you're aware of sound you're even aware of sound without its mask of meaning so in other words without words meaning having to mean words and so as you have cultivated an ability within your sense of silent observance and still presence Light and geometry become tools of co-creation with your greater involvement in your life. And so geometry and light are very interesting technologies. They're consciousness technologies in the sense that they alter your sense of presence and self as you navigate in, 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 in conception. So what that means is that, for example, I, I talked about earlier how I utilize the inverted triangle simply just as a shape and then my observance of it suddenly gave me a vision that the triangle is really not significant. It is you, the experiencer, who is significant into what instantly the, the shape lights up within you. And it is not codes, patterns, it is not something where we are being fed too much uh, of a certain, you know, shape or certain design. It's simply that you have been given the gift of self-awareness. And so utilize it because that self-awareness will expand the dimensions of your life. What that means is that if I knew, if I knew what I knew now about self-contemplation, I would have done it earlier. And some people, you, in a sense, everyone is doing it on some level, but I would have done it more consciously because then I would have more significance for my value of life. Because I would see the value is not based on the external when all that is within you is really all that is within you so we must handle our awareness with an elegance of allowance so be kind to yourself and learn from all forms all shapes and recognize that geometry and light and their combination in your subtler realms are just simple co-creation so in other words I've I've even noticed sometimes geometry and light move in ways that I've never seen move so I see the creativity of my vision manifesting in my subtle realm. So for example, I've heard some people say they see color around certain people or they see certain things, like they just see it. And I, I was like, 
What do you mean? And, not, and I wondered what the concept of an aura is, and I noticed it is sensitivity. It is different states of self-awareness that the color is simply the hue of how the spectrum was when the man looked at whoever he looked at. So what that means is that the lenses can be many or the lenses can be one. But regardless, it is the emptiness of the experiencer that continues on. So, with the most calm and compassionate breath, remember who you are there is much to remember and much to reveal within the self. Trust life and in that trust become your greatest co-creation. <laughs> much blessings and namaste.